Roswell, New Mexico is known for one thing and one thing alone. It's the birthplace of John Denver. Thank God I'm a country boy, right? Thank God I'm a country boy. Okay, and also, um, maybe aliens crashed there? Which is why they made a TV show with aliens and called it, you guessed it, Roswell. Or as we like to call it, Buffy with aliens. Or Charmed or Dawson's Creek with aliens. It really works just any show from that time period and then with aliens. As you no doubt remember, there were tons of teen dramas made in the late 90s. Actually, teen drama might not have existed before 1990. We don't know. There's no way to tell. But only one dared to do it with stories that involve time travel, alien princesses, evil clones, and this pair of crazy talking eyebrows, also known as Colin Hanks. Don't worry, those brows got trimmed in later episodes, you guys. This melodramatic and lovable series premiered in 1999 on the WB channel, now the CW, and quickly developed a passionate fan base that fueled the show's success. Sadly, the ratings never skyrocketed and Roswell only lasted three seasons. But man, things open with a bang. Literally. And hey, if you shoot a waitress by accident, you at least leave a tip, you monsters. God. The woman hit by that bullet is main character Liz Parker, played by Sherry Appleby, who you might recognize now as Rachel from Unreal, or from that one Doogie Howser episode she did. Yes, we still watch Doogie Howser reruns, no further questions, we will not be making a further comment on that. Now, Liz is just your typical high school student who excels at science and works part-time at the local diner, until she gets shot by some randos, magically healed by a moody guy with bangs, and totally freaks out about it in an appropriate way. I, I just spilled ketchup. I'm really, I'm okay. But not really. I mean, we would be freaking out, or at least sell that story to TMZ. Plus, you know that handprint's not washing off. That's a problem. All right, then at least give us some obligatory 90s references to let us know what the time period is. Come on, right? It was kind of like a, like a muscular Beavis, you know? And then the other one was like a, like a beefy butthead. I'm gonna need a better description than that. That hits the spot. Very good. The shooting is the catalyst for the entire series as Liz confronts her hunky healer and classmate Max and discovers that he's hiding a dark secret, that he's on thin ice with Miss Hardy. Could I get a bathroom pass? High maintenance today, aren't we? Ooh, burn, you just had to pee, lady. You don't have to go nuts on him. But his real secret is, surprise, he's an alien. In fact, he's one of the aliens that allegedly crash-landed in Roswell in 1947, except so much better looking than we were ever led to believe. Later in school, Liz analyzes Max's DNA, serious breach of privacy, and learns the truth. She confronts Max, who immediately comes clean without any resistance whatsoever. Max, what I'm gonna suggest to you is that we just go back into the bio lab now so that I can take a sample so that I can see what I'm thinking is wrong, you know? that I got the wrong cells. You didn't. She even gave you an out, man, come on. Max survived the crash alongside his sister Isabel and their friend Michael, who are also students at the school. Note, Isabel is played by Katherine Heigl, who apparently only plays characters named Isabel, fact. She's a stickler for the rules and urges her fellow aliens never to use their powers in public, unless it's taco related. You use your powers all the time. <sighs> Recreationally. Use your hands, God. Later in the season, the three aliens are joined by another one named Tess. In her previous life, she was an alien queen married to Max. But you know what, times change, and now she's just a major pain. Also, she later kills Alex, which was mean, but great because it was a behind the scenes decision that allowed Colin Hanks to star in his first feature film, Orange County. Very underrated, very funny movie. Though years later, Tess puts her evil ways behind her when she stars as Claire from Lost. Or as we all know her, the one who had that baby. Later in the series, Liz discovers that the aliens are actually alien clones mixed with human DNA in order to pass for human, if you call this human. I was sleeping. Amazing. What's amazing? That you can sleep on a key to our entire existence is out there. Such a natural human delivery. The aliens are from the planet Antar, where they're known as the Royal Four. Max was the king, Tess his queen, and Michael a general who was engaged to Isabel. 
Now, stranded on Earth, they must find a way home while evading the authorities and eating an unhealthy amount of hot sauce. You know, I finally feel like I have a quasi-normal existence and you blow it all with one random act of lunacy. Well, how did you let my misguided brother do this? Hey, don't turn this around on me. I'm not the one who thinks he's a superhero. The series had deep sci-fi roots, but those supernatural plot threads took a backseat to more traditional teen plot lines like love triangles. So many love triangles. There was Liz and Max and Kyle, the sheriff's son. Then Michael and Maria and Isabel. Isabel and Michael and... Alex? Really? Huh. Also, Max and Liz and Tess. That was a big one. She manages to break up Liz and Max. Not to mention the hottest love story of them all. Every alien and so much hot sauce. Even the sheriff thinks it's weird. But the main relationship drama centers around Liz, Max, and Kyle. Kyle's cool because he wears a varsity jacket. Also, he's a stickler for punctuality, which when you're a teen doesn't seem to matter, but when you're an adult lady waiting in a restaurant, you appreciate. I just feel like if you care about a person, which I do, then you should be on time. Riveting stuff, Kyle. No wonder you're losing out to Max. He's brimming with personality. How's it going? Good. Um, you know, things are just, things are just normal, you know? Completely normal. Good. Or maybe not. The first season chronicles the ups and downs of the various relationships in a bunch of standalone episodes with no real overarching narrative. As the ratings fell, the WB toyed with canceling the show. Fans knew it was on the bubble, so they sent producers hundreds of bottles of, what else, hot sauce. And the campaign worked. Roswell was renewed, though the network wanted to spice things up in season two. Pun intended. You got it. Enter Ronald Moore, the storied science fiction writer behind many classic Star Trek TNG episodes and the man who would later become the executive producer of Battlestar Galactica. No, not that one, the cool one. There we go. Moore pushed the show into deeper sci-fi as season two explored some truly surreal premises. There was the time they all traveled to the future to witness the end of the world in an episode titled The End of the World. The one where an alien device annihilates the human race in order to find the aliens hiding amongst them. And a truly unforgettable Christmas special so emotionally stirring that fans still talk about it to this day. Are you an angel? Go back to sleep. The craziest twist was when our alien protagonists discovered that they had evil clones. Space is what we call very, very big. You know, it's not easy to get places. People just don't zip around the galaxy like on Star Trek. The evil clones kidnap the regular aliens and replace them in school, leaving viewers guessing who's real and who's not. Sound familiar, Battlestar fans? I am a Cylon. I've fooled you for months now. That's right, the evil clones are actually Cylons and Roswell is a secret prequel to Battlestar. Not really though, not at all, that's not true. Please don't blog about that or anything because it's completely fake. But would have been pretty cool, right? I know. While many consider the second season to be a rousing success, the network disagreed. Ratings continued to drop, so the WB pulled the plug. But like Liz, the show had a second life. UPN picked it up for a third season. Sadly, it wasn't so hot. Sauce, okay, I'm sorry for that one and only for that one. The third and final season concludes with Liz and the aliens graduating high school and fleeing Roswell just as the FBI closes in on them. One of the last shots of the series shows Liz and Max getting married. It's a sweet way to end the series and almost makes up for an uneven final season that never fully recovered from its guest spot with Joe Pantoliano. Nothing against him, I'm just not over the time he betrayed Neo in the Matrix. A surprise, asshole. I bet you never saw this coming. Despite the series ending, fans still had plenty of Roswell material to explore. After all, the show was initially based on a popular series of young adult books called Roswell High, though the books are pretty different. They're aimed at a younger preteen audience and are a lighthearted romp exploring Max and his pal's alien origins. But the show could have been even more drastically different. For one, there could have been a different actor playing Max. Producers chose Jason Bear after his performances on similar shows, Seventh Heaven and Dawson's Creek, where he had the same haircut. Where'd you find this? On the floor, Mr. Peterson's class. At least get some frosted tips or something, dude. You know, change it up. And they picked Bear over none other than the clown prince of crime himself. Not Jack Nicholson, Heath Ledger. Heath was in the mix, but then producers backed away after Ledger's short-lived adventure series, Roar, failed. What a shame. Imagine all the disappearing pencil tricks he could have performed if he really was magic. 
Ta-da! It's... it's gone. Looking back, what made Roswell so can't miss were the will-they-won't-they -they relationships, relatable high school dramas, and X-Files-ish sci-fi flourishes. And also that theme song. I mean, ugh, Dido just singing like she's essentially a cup of tea in a song. Uh, nothing's more 90s. I can't breathe until you're resting here with me. What was your favorite bonkers Roswell moment? Let us know in the comments and enjoy your hot sauce.